The scripture today comes to us from the book of Acts. And this is a story, and I know, it, I know that in the bulletin it says there's select verses from Romans 8. And I was set to do that until yesterday. And then the Spirit led me in a different direction, so I hope you'll just come with me. We're going to do Acts 15 and its select verses. If you want to follow along, it's fine, but I'm going to be reading out of a version of the Bible called The Message, so it might be easier for you if you just listen. We're going to start at chapter 15, verse 1. It wasn't long before some Jews showed up from Judea insisting that everyone be circumcised. If you're not circumcised in the Mosaic fashion, you can't be saved. Well, Paul and Barnabas were on their feet at once in fierce protest. The church decided to resolve the matter by sending Paul and Barnabas and a few others to put it before the apostles and leaders in Jerusalem. They were going to talk about it. After they were sent off and on their way, they told everyone they met as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria about the breakthrough to the non-Jewish outsiders. Everyone who heard the news cheered. It was terrific news. Everyone was included. When they got to Jerusalem, Paul and Barnabas were graciously received by the whole church, including the apostles and the leaders. They reported on their recent journey and how God had used them to open up things to the to open things up to the outsiders. Then they had a discussion. We're skipping some verses here where they had a discussion about circumcision and whether it was right or whether it was wrong to, to impose circumcision on Gentiles who were going to become part of the church. So jump to verse 22 if you're following along. Everyone agreed, apostle, leaders, all the people. And they picked Judas, named Barsabbas, and Silas. They both carried considerable weight in the church, and they sent them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas with a letter. And the letter said this, that Gentiles shouldn't be burdened with having to be circumcised just because they want to join the church and be followers of Christ. Now jump down to verse 35. Paul and Barnabas stayed on in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of God. But they weren't alone. There were a number of teachers and preachers at that time in Antioch as well. And after a few days of this, Paul said to Barnabas, well, let's go back to visit all our friends in each of the towns where we preached the word of God before. Let's see how they're doing. Barnabas wanted to take John along, the John who was nicknamed Mark. But Paul didn't want to have him. He wasn't going about to take along a quitter who, as soon as, possible, as soon as the going got tough last time, he had jumped ship on them in Pamphylia. Tempers flared, and they ended up going their separate ways. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and offered up and offered up by their friends to the grace of the master, went to Syria and Sicilia to put grit or strengthen those congregations. May God bless and challenge us at the reading of this word. Here's what I know. This is one of the most beautiful songs they ever wrote, and also you're never hearing exactly what they wrote. It all lends itself to mystery, and it all lends itself to something that happened back in 1968, 69, and 70. No one was there. None of us were there in that recording studio that day. But I will tell you this, the band was so tense by that time, and relationships between the band members were so volatile that Ringo had already quit the band, came back. George had quit the band that day and came back. Do you know who I'm talking about? George, Ringo, Paul, and, and John, right? John loathed the song. He told Paul that it was granny music. 
And the reason is because John had already been going so experimental and his music was growing in a direction that he didn't even anticipate. He had met Yoko, a new woman in his life, and they were exploring and experimenting and all kinds of things, and his music reflected that. George also was going on his own track. His mind was moving more spiritual. He, out of the four, he's the most spiritual one uh, of the group. And then even Ringo, I think he was just kind of a lost soul in that, and Paul really tried to hold things together. Interestingly, this is the last song that was revealed before Paul himself would say he's quitting the band. It was, for lack of a better word, their breakup song. And we don't like to think about that. It's sad, right? For Beatles fans all over the world, it was a sad day when things broke up with the Beatles and everyone hoped and prayed that someday they'd get back together because this is the way it's supposed to be. And we can go back to those fun times of being on the beach and listening to the Beatles or having our headphones on or whatever, sitting in our living rooms and remembering a simpler time, a better time. Surely, the Beatles brought that joy because they impacted a whole generation, and not just musically. Really, socially and politically, they impacted a whole generation of people, a lot of you sitting right here today. The other reason you're never going to hear the original to that song is it's been changed, dubbed, overdubbed, produced, there are, there, does, has anyone heard the theory that there's two guitar solos, two versions of that, because there's two guitar solos in that, in that? Well, here's what happened. They did do a guitar solo after George came back. They recorded that guitar solo, and then it was dubbed over on that original recording, dubbed over, and that recording was produced by George Martin, and it was a very soft and soothing aspect of that. Then, later on, they gave the song to Phil Spector, who produced it in a really rock, gritty kind of piece. And that's what you heard today with that guitar solo. Two different takes on the same thing. And he was there both times. Even the words are not authentic. Is it, there will be an answer? In some versions, it's, there will be no sorrow. And when the brokenhearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, yes. And then at the end, there will be no sorrow. We get one, depending on what we listen to. This is the way it is with scripture. We see one aspect. We see through one lens. We see one-sided. And this is the one that we get used to. When things mess with us, and we see something else or a different interpretation by someone else that might have been there, we get a different reflection on that text, yes? The same thing was going on with, George, with Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas had been together forever. They were besties. From the moment Paul was converted, he was just like enamored with Barnabas. Barnabas was an encourager. His real name was actually, anyone know? Oh gosh, what was his name? <laughs> he had a different name. And that name got changed. The, the, the disciples started calling him Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, because he was so encouraging and just so gracious and so kind. And it was Barnabas that had this gift of being able to see into people and see their gifts. He saw more in them than they ever saw in themselves. In fact, it was Paul that, it was Barnabas that said, you know what? I know that all of you Gentiles, you can't stand and you're afraid of Paul, but we're going to give him a shot. I see true spirit in him. So frankly, if it were not for Barnabas sticking up for Paul and saying he's the one, I don't know what would have happened. Paul may have just kind of faded into oblivion. So Barnabas was important. And then came, came a little bit longer, and Paul and Barnabas went on their first mission. They were commissioned to do this beautiful mission. Well, they took Barnabas's cousin with them, who was called John Mark. He's, his name is John, but they nicknamed him Mark. I don't know why everyone had a nickname. They just did. So we're going to call him John Mark. John Mark was with them. John Mark, when things started to get tough, 
he fled and he left. So now, fast forward, Paul's fine with that. Fast forward, they're going on another mission journey, but this time Paul says, I'm not bringing your ratty cousin with us. He left, and I need somebody who I can count on. Last time I went to prison by myself, right? So uh, this is what happened. Barnabas digs his heels in. Paul digs his heels in. Why did Barnabas dig his heel in? We don't know. We don't know what kind of tension was building with them before that. We don't know why he dug his heel. Maybe Barnabas truly was the mentor that he was supposed to be. He was a mentor. He was living out his encouragement. And maybe he felt like John Mark needed a little bit more of encouragement. And he gave it to him. And so he stuck by him. Well, Paul, on the other hand, split and went with Silas. And they went off and did a whole bunch of beautiful things together as well and suffered. Why is this all important? I think for two reasons. The first is, I'm so glad that they put it in, that we have this. It would have been very easy to leave this little account out. It's, it's very short verses, and they could have just left it out and just said, yep, Paul and Barnabas, you know, they went their separate ways and not told us about the argument at all. I think it's important that they do because there are times that we do get into conflict with people, even people we love, even people that have been with us forever. It also normalizes them a little bit and says, you know what, even they, even the ones that talked about this, Paul, my, one of my favorite verses, uh, when he talks about we're given this ministry of healing and reconciliation, healing and reconciliation, healing and reconciliation. You've heard me say it thousands of times over the last few years. He couldn't reconcile. Does it make it less? Does it make him a failure? Does it make us a failure when we just can't make it work? And that brings me to the second thing. Both of them were following their own spirit. Paul felt strongly that he needed to go. He needed to go to Antioch, and he needed a strong team with him. He knew it because he knew what he had faced last time, and he knew what he needed this time. Barnabas also, strong spirit within him, discernment. He needed to be able to count on and do the gifts that God was calling him to. So they did. Both of them had beautiful, prosperous ministries, and their ministry was doubled because of that. Because they were able to part ways, they were able to then explore and grow, and the church ended up where it is today. Sometimes we stay in a place or with people that are not good for us anymore. Even though we love them, Sometimes God calls us to move outside our comfort zone and move outside our place. We have to be okay with that. And I know some of you have felt that even in leaving different churches that you've, you've left and grieved and really tormented yourself and, and struggled in order to get to, to this place. But you knew God was calling you here. I did the same thing. Right? I left a place that I was happy and loved those people and knew that God was calling me here. I had to do the same thing. So the ministry gets spread. This is not something to be afraid of. This is something to celebrate. You know, later on, Paul says of Mark, Mark John Mark, he's a wonderful minister. In fact, when you're going to go, bring him with you because he is exceptional. You don't have to think poorly of the people that are left behind or poorly of the people that you've either outgrown or God is sending you to a different place. You can respect them and love them because that's what we're called to do. We're just not called to stay in the same place forever. And maybe you will be called to stay in the same place forever. Maybe you'll be called to stay in the same ministry situation for the entirety of your life from birth to grave in the same church, and that's great, but the church will never be the same from week to week. We see it here 
every single week there's different people every single week some of us are here and some of us are gone there's new people coming in all the time some people are moving some people are dying some people have to go to other places calls change so nothing stays the same this this thing in us that wants everything to be okay because it makes us feel good that's not what God's calling us to do this is a very soothing beautiful song this let it be right it's beautiful it makes us feel safe it makes us feel secure but it also says though we may be parted there is still a chance that we that they will see that there will be an answer. We can't go with God and stay where we are at the same time. And that means we have to always open ourselves up to change. Is it easy? No. No. Change is never easy. It's never easy to accept, and it's never easy to go through. We're living in a world right now that changes every single day. This morning I turned on the news and I heard about the missile attack in the Middle East. For lives over there, the world just turned upside down. Things in our own country and in our own backyard and in our own homes change every day. We can't be so married to being just sameness that we miss the opportunity that God is showing us. Let's, let's reverse it. Let's say Paul and Barnabas never, never parted ways. They just stayed the same their whole lives. And they tried to fit into that model that they were doing. Do you think it would work? Probably God would make it work if that was God's will. But I do know this. As long as we're growing and as long as we're changing, we're always being called to something new. Allow yourselves to be called to something new. Not so we can go back to a simpler time. Not so we can go back to a better time. Because God has beautiful things for us in the future. Look at all the things that Paul wrote. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes? He wrote that beautiful passage in Corinthians 13, right? Love. There's, love is like a beautiful whatever that love passage is, right? <laughs> it's beautiful. Paul is the one who wrote, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. We have to allow the spirit first, and that's what makes the separation possible. That's what makes the breakup okay. We know that even if the band breaks up, the music continues. All of those Beatles had their own career, yes? They all have beautiful songs that we can look back to. We can look at Paul. We can look at where Barnabas landed. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And you can point, I would say, from the people who have left here who are also out doing ministry. The people who have come here are now have vibrant, different ministries. Let's just open ourselves to whatever God has. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God bless us today. We are not happy when you call us to change. We want things to just stay the same, to let everything be as it is. We hope that somebody comes along and gives us a vision or tells us that everything is going to be okay, when in reality, you have been telling us that all along. You are the one constant through all the change that you will always be with us, that you'll never forsake us, that you'll never abandon us, and that even though we may be separated, we'll always be one in you. In Jesus' name, amen.